below their colleagues, partners and investors. You're on the channel doing of smarters. I am as always Alexander Sudriv and today we are in our shooting studio and Victor Arostov came here to visit us. Today he will share with us the latest news on the results of his activity and I think that each of you will be able to learn a lot of new interesting things. Enjoy watching. Victor, I am glad to welcome you here, this time in our studio. Recently we have visited you and now you are here in Savalmash. Good afternoon. I am also happy, but I would like to correct you. You came to visit and I've come home. Yes, that's true. So basically, I feel at home here in Savalmash. It is also part of me, or I'm part of it. I don't know. It's difficult to say, but I feel at home here, so I'm saying I've come home. Of course, you can come more often, but you can set up a direct teleportation channel. It would be nice, actually. Way high Moscow. We would be very happy about that. Zelenograd. The green channel must be opened. So, I'm also happy when I'm here. I feel like I'm an indispensable part of the whole process and I'm also happy. Things are changing much faster here than in Weihai. Although a lot of people may think that in Weihai they are also changing quickly. Of course, we're working together dynamically, so it is very pleasing to see how everything is improving. I have noticed that last time I was here, it was last year in May, six months ago. I'm here in the studio now in the own studio of Savalmash. Of course, it is impressive. It's a completely new level. That's why this is also impressive and makes us take the same steps in China. Because for me, I don't know, it makes no difference if it's China or Russia. We are aiming at entering the market of more than one country. So, this connection, the fact that we want to enter joint global markets, what should drive us, is not aimed at the economy of some particular country. We are aimed at the economy of our company. Yes, the economy of Savalmash. That's right, Savalmash. And in fact, everyone who is part of it. And the places where the branches will be opened later. We must look at this in an open-minded way. So that it is much broader, not field-specific. I fully agree with you, indeed. Therefore, the fact that I happen to be in China, being from Germany, if it didn't succeed somewhere in Europe, well, Let's go where it works, we must search for other new ways. That's why it is also fatal to focus on the Russian market only. Of course, we achieve by pursuing, and there is no other way to say it. Well, when other markets will get involved, the Russian market will do so too. Because markets are markets, and you need to enter those where you can develop successfully. Of course, this is a cyclical process, I would say. And one market draws another. Because if something has become popular somewhere, then let's say representatives of another market will look at it and say, oh, what an interesting thing, let's try it, in layman's terms. Victor, can you tell us what interesting processes have been taking place in China and Germany since we came to visit you? What have you managed to achieve? Maybe you have some interesting news from Thailand? We've heard a lot about it and we want to learn about it from you personally. Rumors are spreading, yes, things keep going. We are now completing the certification of the B6 Plus car, which was used for testing. We did all the shooting, people will be able to see. As I understand, the video has only been partially shown since the certification is being completed. We hope that this certification will have been completed by the end of the month and we are ready to enter the European markets with this car. Similarly, the K-Cross, that good motorcycle you have very good impressions from, is being currently certified. Yes, the same for me. Well, it seems to me that any person riding this motorcycle will have a satisfied pace, no less. I like riding it most of all, especially on the Chinese roads. 
it's just great. No traffic jam is a problem. And this dynamics is of course impressive. This movement is certainly inspiring because this vehicle is being prepared for the European markets. Of course, though, not only. But when there is a European certificate, the roads are open to other countries too. Here at the same time, right after your departure, we started testing lightweight trucks. So far, they use DA100 SL motors, i.e. 7 kW. This is an extended version. Yes, and the DA112 motor will also be available. It all depends on the consumer. So far in China, the orders are for the vehicles with a speed of up to 45 km per hour. And it's clear that 1.5 ton trucks require bigger capacities for speeds that are much higher than that. But I think our viewers will be very interested to know why China limits the speed to 45 km. I mean, is it due to the traffic itself, the average speed in the city, or it is what private enterprises have? This is purely political and economic restriction, because the speed of 45 km per hour does not require any special certificates. In other words, this is a vehicle that is allowed for straight traffic. It is much more profitable for companies, for branches of industry, because it doesn't incur large certification expenses. These are the speeds that allow safe speeds, I mean. And so, if you look at the entire market in China, mainly scooters, motorcycles, small cars, then this is a speed of up to 45 km per hour. This is the main thing. I mean, it's an economic factor that allows you to produce usable vehicles with minimal costs. And basically, if you had been there and looked at how these three-wheeled vehicles go, these are the companies that are engaged in service, maintenance, cleaning, beautification, landscaping. In other words, this whole service niche uses these vehicles that goes with a speed of up to 45 km per hour. But for now, are these vehicles specifically powered by an internal combustion engine, ICE, or are they also powered by electricity? No, they are mostly electric, if you noticed it in China. There are these old smoke houses with internal combustion engines, big tractors. They still work on ICEs, but most vehicles are powered by electricity. But the fact that we are looking at our niche now, what makes our motors different, is a bigger torque. Its consumption, this is understandable, but the fact is that a bigger torque allows you to apply these vehicles in mountainous areas. Even if we consider China, the development of China, all these vehicles, these lightweight ones, are driven in flat terrain areas. In more mountainous areas, electric vehicles disappear. Yes. I see that this is our niche. It is clear that those niches will be filled too, but when companies realize that these vehicles can be promoted in mountainous areas, and our tests have also shown that these motors are not sensitive to mountainous terrain, they are not affected because the torque is good. And these vehicles will go in this direction. Yes. And by the way, you can probably think a little about the following topic. I understand that China is a dynamically developing country, and it's quite possible that the high mountain areas will also be populated in some way over time. As far as I know, classic vehicles with an internal combustion engine also start to operate quite badly when the air is rarefied. They lose power. I have seen multiple times when a powerful tractor tries to go up a mountain, there is a road train, and it is stuck lacking just a little bit of power. And some other vehicle is used to push it so that it can keep going. What about electric motors? Do they need enough oxygen to work? Does this factor affect their operation? I don't think so. Oxygen doesn't seem to go through the wires. I haven't noticed it. Maybe some microparticles. I don't know. It's something that physicists 
and chemists should consider. Let them deal with it. But it makes no difference for an electric motor. So again, it turns out to be a promising niche that you can occupy and work. We saw the first electric cars. For example, Kangoo, which is still run in Monaco. We ran it up the slope there too. A fully loaded car up to two tons. It goes up a more than 40 degree slope. I mean percent. Well, people are afraid of just getting in the car because all you can see is the stars. This demonstrates that these vehicles can be used freely in such areas. And this problem is solved. The internal combustion engine doesn't work in the areas with rarefied air. For an electric motor, it makes no difference. The main thing is to make sure the battery doesn't swell if you take it into space. Well, you can simply press it with something. I mean, all the issues are solvable. But the lack of oxygen or the pressure change doesn't affect electric motors, electric vehicles. Well, I will at the same time answer the question about the developments in Thailand. Those motors that were the first to be tested on the Red P Plus car, the first batch of these motors has been shipped to Thailand to be used in electric cars, tuk tuks, and electric boats large electric boats. So it's not the boat that was demonstrated. Well, that one was a low speed. I mean, the speed was up to 25 km per hour, but when people tried, they want to go a little faster, so now the demand for DA112 motor will increase, because this allows you to drive at a much higher speed, and the increase in power allows you to transport more people because there are ships that are larger than boats. And this collaboration with Energy Glory allows you to attract a lot of attention from environmental enthusiasts. But it's not just for environmental enthusiasts. It's the solution to environmental pollution problems that have afflicted Asia. Because the relocation of all the industrial centers and industrial plants to Asia has led to the contamination of rivers, air, and environment, and land. So transition to solar energy, electric motors, boats powered by solar energy and electric motors allows us to improve this environmental situation. We must also take into account that the population density is usually very high in these countries, and diesel engines and the like, being everywhere, have a detrimental effect. These boats in tourist areas are like taxis in Moscow. Well, a little less density, there are no traffic jams there. But you can imagine that these diesel engines emits such a huge amount of exhaust gases that it makes it impossible for people to live there. So the transition to electricity and solar energy allows you to completely change not only the environmental situation, but also the quality of life of people who live there. This is why the government is supporting us and the print media are paying attention. I mean, the Prime Minister took part in the demonstration of our first solar boat project, which encouraged moving in this direction, thinking about using bigger power vehicles. Therefore, I expect that in the future we will develop even more powerful motors. Answering the question of why we started with small motors, this was just the answer. Small low-speed vehicles with a power of 800 watt up to 2.5 kilowatt are in a high demand in China. That's why we started with the DA90 motor, which is 3 kilowatts. So we cover this market. And the market, as I understand it, is very big. At least judging by what we have seen there, this is true. 
Most of the transport is represented by electric vehicles, such as mopeds and the like. Well, some lightweight vehicles. Yes, this is exactly it. This direction and this mass production is real mass production. It's not hundreds of items, it's millions of items. If we just count the numbers, China produces millions of these three-wheeled and two-wheeled vehicles a year. This is not comparable to Europe or Russia, especially Russia, since Europe is a little more active in this direction. Therefore, the market needs to be taken into account and looked at. If we want to enter other markets, we need to look at how we will enter this Asian market. So it turns out that today the work and drive electric motors is underway. Yes, this is the main direction. And, and it's important that we constantly keep in touch and that we are constantly working with Dmitry Alexandrovich. Yes, our decision is that the main work in the industrial direction will take place here. I don't see any point in getting involved more actively. We have demonstrated that these vehicles work, but the main developments should be made here. This center should be engaged in doing this. Savalmas should be engaged in development. And distribution and markets are another matter. The way we are going to promote this, I mean we need to use the same base that we have developed in China. And we can and we should use it, because it ensures entering the markets. And we are not aiming at a private consumer. We are interested in companies. I mean the industrial application. So, in fact, it turns out it's the principle of business to business, such a B2B sector. And we do not offer the product to the end consumer. Well, today there is such a policy, as I understand. Or can it also be changed? No, I would not consider this way. Just the final consumer. Who the final consumer is? Well, it's somebody who is already buying a ready-made car or boat. Yes, in that sense. Well, if we consider this, the end consumer is the manufacturers who use motors. Yes, right. I mean, well, it's for manufacturers, exactly. In other words, what we actually do with the cars is, in fact, the following. We make a prototype model of a motorcycle, a car, and provide it for production. That is, we bring it to the final stage using our motors and then provide it for production. In other words, we do not have a goal to produce the cars. We need to show that companies can use our motors. So, we are not aimed at private individuals. Although private individuals are not excluded, we help them. And a lot of people have already ascertained that when they use our motors and encounter some problems with the controller or settings, they can contact even me. I do not refuse to help, although it takes time, but it is important to make sure people feel all the benefits, all the opportunities of these machines. But this is really serious work, because in this case the consumer really understands what they use and what opportunities they have. In other words, even if we take the final consumer, a private individual having these vehicles, although we say that we do not target them exactly, but we do not drop them, because even the final consumer eventually buys finished products from those manufacturers who produce these cars, motorcycles, scooters and boats. It doesn't matter whether it's a rental company or some other companies, these are private consumers, this is a market. In fact, a market consists of private individuals. In fact, it's true. That is, let's put it this way. The stage when the cycle definitely ends. So, when we were starting, it was a direction aimed at attracting people to show that these vehicles work. There were private individuals who took and tested them, and we tested the vehicles ourselves, but over time, it's about targeting companies. And this is the direction to follow. And the largest number of companies or manufacturers is located in Asia. It is impossible to disregard this fact.
Thank you very much. This is very interesting. I think that if you have any news, our viewers will be able to find out about it. There will be news. Sure. We thank you for today's interview and wish you success in your work. We wish success to all of us because, by and large, we are pursuing a common goal and the company Savalmash is a big and good home for everyone. Therefore, we will definitely succeed. Thank you too. Thank you for the opportunity to be here, for the opportunity to communicate with people, for the opportunity to go on the air. Because this is our joint work, it will help us to move forward together. It is not only useful for an individual team member, but also for the whole team and for the investor teams our team and for Sovelmash on the whole. All the best. Thank you very much.